Greetings, everyone. My name is Barbara Coverson. I am the program manager for Family Strengthening Families. We are part of the Stocks for Like Tibaha School District, and we are just about ready to start our Parent Talk podcast at Discovery Center. And I'm Joey for the Family Community Outreach Specialist with Family Strengthening Families at the Discovery Center. And today we have a guest with us, and we're so excited. Would you like to please introduce yourself? Hi, I am Kilda Chandler with Foster and Faith here in Starwood. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. We are so excited. So we're going to get ready and begin, not prolong this any longer. We're going to get on to the good information that uh, uh, we know we have to come forth from our podcast today. And we hope everyone uh, tune in and mm -hmm. And just enjoy this podcast from today. You know, uh, Joy, what we like to do from time to time is have special guests on to kind of help um, our audience know more about their programs and mm -hmm. what they do and the resources and services that they have to offer. Um, because we know when we work together, uh, we can do so much more. And that's so um, that's one of the things we like to do with our podcast. And, and on today, we have um, Fostering Faith. And and um, so first of all, before we get into it too much, what um, what is it that you would like to accomplish through this, through your organization? What What is your vision or your mission? So Fostering Faith's vision, it, mission is to just bridge the gap. That's kind of our little statement we say, we're bridging the gap. So um, the longer version, though, is to bridge the gap between um, underserved and underprivileged children and our wholesome uh, life. So anything that we just like the middle man, so if um, a family needs something that can prevent, you know, a removal from the home or things like that, just to help the child become better, that's what, that's what we do. Great, right? Yes, that's great. But we know, um, we didn't say it earlier, but this month, May, is National um, Foster Care Month. And so uh, it's being recognized. And that's another reason why we're glad to have you as a guest, too. And you mentioned, as you said, that about with, well, in your name, Foster and Faith, and being about the removal of the uh, possible removal of children from the home. So what other things are you all doing to um, prevent or else help those that have been removed from the home? Um, so most of all of our programs are set up to just provide some type of resource. Um, the bridge, that particular program is for prevention. Um, so actually, I actually got a call Friday for um, something that was needed to prevent this child from being removed from the home. Um, so I was able to locate that thing and get it to that family um, and make those arrangements so that child wouldn't have to be removed um, from the home. We do know that all removals aren't necessarily abuse. All removals aren't necessarily drug related. Some are just mom is trying her best and it's just not working. So um, if we can provide something to alleviate that so the children can stay in the home, if the home is a safe place, then you know we try to do that. And we also try to, um, to just meet the need before the need is even a need. Um, so we noticed when we first started year one, our mission was geared strictly towards foster children. And we noticed quickly that, you no, know, we got to go a little bit broader because if we can help them beforehand, before CPS call, you know, then that, that can prevent a removal as well. So that's just how the, the bridge program started okay mm -hmm. all right hmm. so i noticed that you started um looking at your your history when you got started want you can you just share a little bit about that um how you got started why did you start um when did you start 
So, um, fostering faith actually began as a project. It was just a project that I wanted to do to give back to the uh, community because I was graduating with my master's. I just wanted to give back. And um, at the time, the project was called My Forever Bag. Um, I was just thinking, thinking like, what can I do to, you know, to give back to the community? And the foster care system kept popping up on different stuff. I mean, I don't know if my phone was ringing my mind, but it just, different stuff just kept popping up. So I decided to um, solicit a donation uh, for toiletries and backpacks um, to donate to the foster care system because the statistic that I um, read was that most children that get removed from their home, most of, if they have anything, it's in a garbage bag. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, that, that made me upset. So um, I solicited for a small duffel bag and backpacks and toiletry items. I went and purchased some items from the local Dirt Cheap because they have those nice travel size items. And I donated them all to CPS. And that was the project. I was done. Like, mm -hmm. I did, you know, I gave back. However, my mentor at the time was like, no, ma'am, this, you did something great. This is something you need to continue to pursue. Um, you have a passion for it. I've watched you light up with being able to do this. I think this is something you should um, pursue and possibly as a nonprofit. So I got to back and forth with her and running from it. And I finally realized that it is something that I'm very passionate about and that it was something that I, I needed to you know, pursue and just step out on faith and do it. So with that, I decided to actually file for a 501c3. We did change the name to more of a organization name rather than a project name. The project was my forever bad. So we did decide to change the name to Fostering Faith. And that's how we got started um, legally. We filed, we got our 501c3 in May of 2019. So technically we're on year four. But we did we were working before then, you know, with the project and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> so, so you know, I, I, I'm hearing, you know, that you kind of really got started right as COVID got started. So, what was that like? I see you're still here. So, <laughs> but what was that like? COVID, COVID was a disaster. Um, just when we felt like we were getting our boots on the ground and we were like start to get momentum, everything shut down. So it was like, oh wow, oh, well, what can you know we do? How do I tap into the school system? How do I do this with staying safe? How do I do this with shelter in place, you know, laws in place and stuff like that? And at the time, we just decided to pause. Like, if someone calls and needs something, we'll find it. But the, like, promoting it, we paused on it because a lot of my team were, were like, healthcare providers or teachers. And at the time, I was working in healthcare. So it was just, a lot of mental capacity, you know, taking a lot from our mental capacity with COVID alone. So it definitely um, got pushed like towards the back burner for us to be able to recuperate. But <laughs> when we figured out that COVID wasn't really going nowhere and we just got to kind of live with it, we decided at the end of year two that year three was going to be our rebranding and revamping and getting ourselves back out there in the community to be be able to serve them. So that's what we did for year three. And we feel like now we have, we have are gaining our momentum back. Um some organizations in Star will definitely know who we are to be able to ask us for some things, but we want the entire to community to know who we are. Um parents, schools, you know, organizations that can um, pour into us and things like this. So that's that's one of our goals. Okay, great. That's a great story, uh, and of empowerment. 
of empowerment that y'all got it back going. You know, sometimes it's okay to take a pause. Yeah, you know, we we had to. We still we, we, had requests during that time, and we did fulfill them, but it wasn't a. We wasn't marketing. Um, we did take a pause on that because it was just a COVID was a lot. It was COVID yeah. still is a lot, so um, we had to know our limit limitations and not get you know too overwhelmed with that. We you know are literally fighting for our lives when we got mm. COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that you have um, some of the things that you've done um, um, and on your website. Uh, and for our audience, could you just give us the website's um, address? Yes, our website is wearefosteringfaith.org. I'm sorry, we, W-E-A-R-E-F-O-S-T-E-R-I-N-G. F A I T H dot org. <laughs> so okay. we are fostering faith with our being completely spelled out. Yeah. So I know it's like on your website, you you talked about the impact and the things that you've done. Uh, and I just thought it was, you know, for the amount of time that you have actually been um, uh, functioning even in the midst of COVID that you were able to do some of the things that you've done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I noticed like you, you've given out over 3,500 or 3,500 plus school supplies. That's mm -hmm. through one of your programs? Yes, ma'am. That's our back to school um, program. So we run that every year. Um, last year and this year is going to be... Last year was different. This year will be different as well because of the way the school system is going back to school. We got a very short time to get out of school and get back in school, so we are doing it a little bit different. But, um, yeah, we solicited donations from the community. We have drop-off um, stations around the community um, that people can drop off school supplies. We also purchase school supplies ourselves, and then we rally them all up and donate them to um, Child Protective Services or anyone that has requested school supplies. Um, last year, we did something a little different where we identified a teacher that wanted extra school supplies to be able to serve their children in their class. Um, so teachers are hands-on with the kids that feed them every day. They know what their students need. So we felt it would be a better way to serve those kids by tapping into a teacher and um, giving a teacher a set of extra school supplies for, for their classroom. We also try to look at it um, as giving an opportunity for the community to give back to. So even if your child doesn't need school supplies, we offered a raffle. So it was like a fundraising for us, for us as well. So we did a raffle. I think the tickets were $5, I believe, 2 or $5. And, you know, even if your child didn't necessarily need school supplies where you needed to request them from us, you could still purchase tickets to win a, your child's school supplies. So not only are you, um, you know, feeling empowered because you donated, but you also, if you want, if you won, you got your child's school to probably take care of as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's that's one of your services that you offer. Um, I I know you have your your toy drive. What do you call that? And what is that that like? Is I know it's not Christmas. <laughs> but it's coming. <laughs> it is coming. Christmas is a jolly Christmas. Um. Christmas is different. Um, this past Christmas was definitely a little bit different. We just adopted a sibling set from the CPS office, and we um got some um Christmas gifts for that sibling set. Um, of course, our regulars that always donated to us, you know, to us all ads. You know, you want um Christmas gifts? Are you guys taking Christmas? Um, drive this year, so we did not turn down any donations, but we also donated those as well to um the child protective services. 
So they had extra in case, you know, some gift or anything. It's, you know, for or whoever they could give them to. So that's what we did. Um, in the past, we have got um, gifts for Mill Creek here and was well, right outside of Swabble. We've done gifts for them. We've done gifts for Sally Kate in Columbus. Well, gift cards. We do gift cards. Um, we let them do what they want. But, you know, so um, we've done that. So, and then I know one year, this was 21, I think it was 2021. We took a lot of toys to CPS. We partnered with Starbucks Strong and they partnered with um at the time I think it was Hawkins. It was a restaurant here and they did a massive toy drive um for it. And um I guess some we didn't count them. We probably should have we'll probably still be counting to this day. But so I guess to bring it into perspective, I drive a Ford Explorer for seats. I let down all of my seats and stuff the driver's seat. And we took, I think it was four loads of oh. toys. So my truck is pretty big and we packed it four times. So um, it was a lot. And um, the CPS office was very grateful for those gifts. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Imagine yeah. so. That was great. Uh, <clears throat> so so tell us about uh, your coat drive um, uh, and your closet. Um, opportunities that you have and hey, share the warrant we do that well, i know we live in the south so it, when it get cold get cold kind of late but when it get cold it's cold mm -hmm. so um we do it kind of and we kind of want to do it like at the end of october and november it's that weird we don't know if it's still hot or cold yet but that's normally when we do it so in december and january mm -hmm. and it's actually cold um children have a coat so I believe this past year was our third year doing it, I believe. And we just solicited coats from the um from the community that we have drop off spots around the community that can drop the coats there. Um so we gathered them all. We I think the first year we did it, we had over 150 coats. I know this past year we had over a hundred coats. And then right after we did distribution, we got another major donation. So we're saving those mm -hmm. and um we're gonna distribute those this winter. Um so we always get a bunch of codes. We always get lots of sizes from babies to adults. Um people tend to forget about high school and just the kids, but they're in grown people clothes. So um people tend to forget about the adult sizes. We get a lot of small kids sizes, but we do need those regular small, medium, large, and extra large for those the high schoolers. Um we the care closet was our major, 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 I'm so proud of our closet. It was our major like project for year three. Um it was something we got off the ground, we got functional um, it is located at the Boys and Girls Club across from McKee Park. Um, we did receive a grant from Ford County, and that was how we was able to make the closet actual, actually functional with shelving and being and drawers and stuff. So it is up and functional, and we, you know, we're just really proud of it because it's being used. Um, just a point of clarification, you cannot just go to the parents' closet. The community cannot just go because it is children there at the boys and girls club. And we do have to, you know, protect the kids and it's in a classroom. But what is at the boys and girls club is a um closet request form. And it's actually one at Discover Street Street as well. And it's one at Duncanson through Start for Strong. So they can fill it out. If they, you know, need anything, it's also a QR code. So you can actually do it through your phone and fill out. And I check it every day. Um, or someone on the team checks it every day to see if um, it's a request and we just fill them as needed. Um, more than likely, 
I can meet you that evening or the next day at most because I'm at the boys and girls club every day. So um, we normally try to get it out pretty fast. But yeah, we're very proud of the foot care closet. Um, it's, it's being utilized and that was our main goal. That's great. That's great. And great to hear too. I uh, imagine it's a big help um can you tell us about their next event for as far as uh with your services um care closet or something an opportunity where people in the community can participate is coming up yeah so we um people are the community is so generous with donating to the care closet um <laughs> then we need to clean it out <laughs> so uh we're actually having a um hot closet clean out day um on june the 10th and it's going to be probably from 10 to 1 or until we get done and so we're asking for volunteers to come out and just help us like sort through things get stuff rebend into proper sizes and things like that um and then once we have, if we want to like separate spring from winter, so we'll be able to better, you know, utilize the closet, especially I don't want to go in right now and I'm fumbling over all winter clothes and I need summer clothes. So we want to just make it a little bit more functional. So we need to clean it out. So anybody that wants to volunteer to help us clean it out, um, you can go to our website and go to the volunteer tab or just send us a message and we'll, um, I can send you the details and we're looking to do that on June the 10th. Okay, great. Can you tell us about, you told us about your website, but what about your social media platforms? How can people, um, and we know a lot of people follow social media and they keep up with things and events and things such as that. So Tell us about your platforms where people can access them. Mm -hmm. So Foster and Faith, oh, mm -mm, I'm sorry, on Facebook, we are Foster and Faith and on Twitter, not Twitter, Instagram, we are also Foster and Faith. So just type in Foster and Faith on Facebook and Foster and Faith on Instagram and you'll find us. Um, to get more updated, I would definitely use Facebook is what we post on more. Um, so if, if anything updates, like volunteer opportunities, events, anything like that, it's going to be on our Facebook page. Okay. Okay. And for those who like to call directly, how can they reach you? <laughs> <laughs> they can call us at 662-205-0481. Um, and that will... um link you to myself or another team member. If we don't answer, just leave a message and we'll get we'll call you back. Okay, great. So um uh, before we end today, Joy, I don't know if you have anything else, but um I I just wanna see if you could put in a plug. I know what you're trying to do, it sounds like is uh to do some services that will help prevent children being removed from their home. Um, and going into the foster care system but we do know that that does happen and I think you mentioned Joy this is um, fostering um, national foster, national care, fo month. foster mm -hmm. care month okay so with that with that being said I, I think I want to ask you you know um, what your experience has been like with um, working with the foster care system um, working with people that have to provide these services uh, to to um, to kids, you know, from time to time, these things do happen. Um, and what has that been like? Um, so sometimes we don't directly get to work, you know, with the kids. Of course, it's live in place and stuff like that. But we also we always get to work through a caseworker, and I've had the opportunity to work with amazing caseworkers here in Starville, and they always are very appreciative of what we can offer and you know what services we have. Um, 
even if it's something we don't provide, I always try to give them something or someone or somewhere they can go to to try to get what they need. So it's never just a no, it's a way. I might can't do that, but let me call somebody who I think can. So um, I think just, you know, having that open communication with those caseworkers um, and Starbull is just awesome. Some Another way we would like to expand is to actually reach out to foster parents and have them know that we're a resource as well. So if they need things, you know, support as well, we, we can offer that support. Um, so that's something we're just really grateful for, that communication. Yeah. Right. And again, I think you said um, earlier that you do provide these services. You don't have to be a foster in, in the foster system, um, you can help with um, children that are not in the system because that's what you want to do is prevent. So, um, yeah. So uh, we just are so happy to have had you on with us today. Uh, yes. Joy, did you have anything else you want to add? I don't have anything else. I'm glad, again, like Ms. Barbara said, glad to have you on today and to share your services as well. So um, it's it's great to hear of what you're doing thank you so much thank you guys for having me on yeah. um, i'm very appreciative mm -hmm. do welcome. you have any did we touch everything is there anything that you want to share that maybe we didn't capture um that you would like to share any final remarks that you may have um just if you would like to be involved, please go to our website and just, you know, fill out the interest form. It's under the volunteer tab, or I think, ways to get involved. So if you would, you know, you don't know how you want to do it, I'll find something. I promise you, I'll find something that fits you um, to get involved. Because it's, it's nothing like giving back to your community. So. And I just want to say... Um, that is so true and on behalf of the greater what is this golden triangle area <laughs> we thank you we appreciate your efforts um yes. you know it takes uh i think it's the african proverb it takes a village uh to raise a, a successful child so we are so appreciative that you're part of that village uh and and we just really know that we can do so much more together and that's, you know, why we do what we do here at Discovery Center and network with other organizations such as yourself yes. so that we can try to together meet the needs of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all all the better when we do that. So thank you so much, Ms. Chandler, for joining us today. Uh, and we look forward to maybe having you on again sometime in the future. And you yes. can tell us how you have just continued to blossom, <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you could make it through all of that adversity with COVID and still yes. be here, yes. uh, your best days are yet to come. Exactly. So keep on keeping on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Uh-huh.